Hey guys, it's me, Halloween Dan, and this is the video I was really planning to do today. Didn't expect to see anything from Home Depot, those cheeky little scoundrels there. Before we get too far into the video though, I did just want to mention a couple of things. The first thing is, you may have noticed, I have just crossed the threshold. I have just gained 900 subscribers. Yay! But no, shh, quiet, quiet, calm. I'm not gonna talk about it because you know, I'm too cool uh, to talk about that. Secondly, you might have seen last week, me and Scared Dad uploaded the second part of our podcast, the Middle Aged Men Talking About Halloween podcast. And on this particular occasion, we were talking about Trans World. Episode one was up on Scared Dad's channel. Episode two was up on my channel. If you haven't checked it out yet, go and check it out. I'll leave the link in the description for both videos. We were a little bit late to the party. We filmed that podcast right after Trans World, so it made more sense. And then let's just say we had some technical difficulties and it, we couldn't upload it as quickly as we would have liked. But either way, there it is. And we had a lovely conversation, so go and check it out. But while re-watching that video, I realised something. I haven't done something that I really love to do when, with all the different ranges of props that we see. And that is, every now and again, I like to do a bit of a ranking. I like to do it for my own sort of sense, so I know where I would put these things if the money ever became available for me to actually buy some of this stuff. So that's exactly what I'm going to be doing today. And today, I am going to be ranking my favourite, all-time, Distortions Unlimited props. Join me. So I've spoken about distortions and their props several times this year because there's been one awesome new prop after another. And after re-watching our podcast the other day, I thought, you know, I haven't talked about my favourite distortions props. I always talk about their things, but I've never really put my cards down on the table and gone, these are the ones I like the most, this is what I'd actually buy. So that's what I'm doing. Now I thought at first I was just going to include the props we've seen this year and basically rank them from my least favourite to favourite of everything we've seen released so far in 2024. But then I thought, no, no, because actually some of my favourites of their props are from past years. They're props that I still think stand head and shoulders above the rest. So this instead is my favourite all-time props. There's loads of them, there's way too many for me to actually include in this video and I've had to cut it down to 10. But still, this is a mixture. So there's some from past years and some from this year. So let's get into it. So in at number 10 is a static prop that's from a couple of years ago, I think it was 2022, and that is the Jack Widow Spider. Now, I love spiders and I love pumpkins. The two, you can't have Halloween without them in my opinion. And this is what distortions do so well. They bring two separate concepts and they mingle them together and create something awesome. And I think this is an awesome looking spider. Yes, it's static, but the best part about Distortions props that even with their statics, you just don't know if they're going to come to life at any moment. And this is one of those props. It's so well done. I love the abdomen on this thing. It looks like a real pumpkin with some great detailing on it. I love the face. It's kind of angry and looks like it's about to bite at any second. The legs look more like vines than they do legs. And then of course, it's got this great light up feature, which is like a flickering flame effect inside of it, which really does light up through the fleshy like skin of this prop, giving it that perfect jack-o'-lantern look where you've just got this eerie kind of orange glow coming through the thing. Absolutely perfect, love this prop. I had to rank it up against the alien spider. And unfortunately, as much as I love the alien spider, I think I prefer this particular version because I just like those two elements of pumpkins and spiders united together more than I do the whole alien thing. But it is aliens that feature in at number nine because in at number nine is one of my favorite props released last year. And that is the alien parasite. Now this prop makes no sense for my horn. I don't know where I'd put it or what I'd do with it. it there's nothing else related to it. 
I just love it technically and love the look of it. You've got this scary parasitic alien creature thrashing around in a test tube on this a huge backboard that's lighting up with dials and numbers and all kinds of things, cool lights. It's got danger written all over it. And the thing's thrashing about behind this tube of glass. And then all of a sudden, alarms start ringing, fog starts to pour down in front of the glass tube. And when you're least expecting it, this thing launches out. So it goes from being this thing that's behind a piece of glass that you're relatively confident can't get out, and all of a sudden, it's in your face. It's literally just hits you smack in the face. Well, it would if you stood too close, so don't stand too close. Either way, this thing is awesome. It's got everything I like about props. It's got the scare factor, it's got the jump, it's got the fog, it's got the lights, it's got the sound effects. And the detail on this thing is insane. Everything from the cycloptic eye, to the brain, to the scary looking teeth. It really does look like the sort of thing you wouldn't want to meet on a dark night. And I love that. In at number eight, is a prop also from last year that I really liked, but I think it's one of those ones that gets overlooked and even I sort of had to re-remember it as I was putting this list together. And that is their animatronic wizard. Now the ancient wizard, as it's officially named, is a really cool looking wizard prop. I love mythical creatures, witches and wizards. And I love the look of this guy, he's really creepy. Re such a realistic face mold on this guy. He's got the long gray beard, the cloak. He's holding a staff that lights up. He's raising his arms. He's speaking his wizard phrases in a, in a very deep commanding voice. Not sure what that was. There's thunder effects. I think you can hook this up to a smoke machine. It's really, really cool. The only thing that I thought was kind of comedic was when you focus in on the face, the eyes look very bloodshot. He looks kind of like he's been on a three day bender and just woken up in a ditch. Not that I would know what that was like because I've never done such things. Either way, despite the rather hangover looking look to this wizard, he is very, very cool and I would love to own him. You dare to enter my presence. In at number seven is another static prop and it's one of my absolute favorites. And that is the pumpkin witch. Now the pumpkin witch isn't for everyone. I think it depends if you like witches, which I obviously do. She's really cool to me. She's not very big. I think she's only about five foot, but still in that prop is packed such realism. It's that face, it's the eyes, those piercing eyes that are looking out at you. And it's that thing again of, is this a scare actor? If it was in a horn and it was dark and you were coming up on this prop, you wouldn't know if it was a scare actor dressed up in makeup, whether it was a prop that was gonna move and dive out at you. It really does look like at any minute this thing might jump out and attack. But it's not just that, this is such a cool take on the classic witch prop. She's clearly got that weird gourd-like pumpkin head that comes to a point really cool and then the tones change from orange to this kind of really gross green she's warty she's gross looking she really looks like she's just been woken up from about a thousand years of sleep in the pumpkin patch and she's like well, what are you doing here she's holding the cool little shriveled pumpkin lantern that will flicker flame lights Everything about her is so epically cool. She really is gross. The only thing is, she's also revealing maybe a little bit too much chest for my liking. And I do think that people might think, hang on, who's the naked broad in your front garden, Dan, if I was to ever put her out? I don't know, <laughs> maybe that's just me. Either way, love the pumpkin wig. In at number six is a prop that technically is from this year, but it's also from last year. And that is the Scarewolf. Now I love both versions, both the legend version, the static version that they brought out this year and the animatronic version from last year. But if I had to put my money on anything, it would definitely go on the animatronic version. I've got a thing for animatronics and I do think in this particular instance, the animatronic version just has it. It's on that big metal board. It's thrashing about violently like it's just been captured and taken to a laboratory to do experiments on and it's trying to escape. It's thrashing violently. The body mold on this is epic. The face is terrifying. Those teeth are, look like they're dripping with saliva. It's really quite a terrifying thing. And with that thrashing movement that distortions do so well, this thing is just elevated to another level. 
The detail, as always, I could talk about the detail forever on Distortions props. And it's that thing of knowing every hair has been put into this thing. It is absolutely artistically amazing. But just the actual scare factor of this thing thrashing about on its metal backboard and then it launches at you in that final scare, amazing. Absolutely love that. And so the animatronic scare wolf is in at number six. This is scare wolf. In at number five is the first prop from this year. And that is the scarecrow wrath. It's another static. But this guy is so awesome. I don't really do the whole Scarecrow Harvest type haunts, but I love them. And I love this guy. He would look amazing in that. Because it's a whole other take on the traditional Scarecrow look. This thing, is it a monster that's dressed as a Scarecrow, hiding in a Scarecrow, waiting to pounce? Is it a mutated Scarecrow? Either way, it's terrifying from those glowing orange eyes to its huge open snarling mouth again with this that look of the wet saliva on the mouth and the tongue so creepy and terrifying and again it's so realistic looking that you wait with bated breath to see if it actually does move or do something and i think it's that unknown and that anticipation of the unknown that elevates props like this to another level for me now we're into the top four, and I really did struggle with the top four. I've moved them around several times because all of these props I kind of love equally. I'm not going to lie. I've really just kind of positioned them in the order of which I'd buy first. If I had if all the money in the world, I would buy all of these props. I would just buy certain ones first. And I thought long and hard about it, and I had to include this prop. And that is Colossus. The reason I've included Colossus, he was from 2020. And ever since seeing that prop, this was the moment when I went from not really knowing who Distortions Unlimited were to suddenly being like, Distortions are the best. Up until that point, Distortions had been completely off my radar. I'd see, probably seen their props before, but just never really known it was their props. And then in 2020, I saw this Colossus prop and I was like, who are these guys? Who's making this thing? This is amazing. And of course, it was Distortions Unlimited. This prop just has everything. It has the physical size. I mean, this thing is enormous, not only in height when it raises up into the, into the air, but in terms of its actual physicality. It is enormous in every single way, and it has such a presence. If you had this in a horn, it really would dominate in more than one way. I can imagine a line of kids waiting to trigger this thing because it sat sleeping in its sleeping position, and then it wakes, and it starts to rise up into the air. It must be 12 or 13 feet, and it starts speaking its lines. It just is so awesome. The detail on this thing is insane too. The face mold is crazy. The hair that's been individually placed in. I think now when you look at some of the props they're bringing out now, perhaps in terms of quality, perhaps Colossus has been overtaken maybe. You can think of that what you like. But still for me, Colossus stands as that prop that introduced me to distortions and I'm so thankful for it doing so. You puny human creatures. In at number three is another prop from this year. And it, it's, it's been one of them ones that at first I wasn't so sure how much I liked it. And then as the time has passed, I'm like, this is amazing. This is brilliant. Give me this prop. I need this prop. Get me this prop. I want this prop. And that is Banshee. This prop kind of has it all for me. It's a mythical creature. Love a mythical creature. And what a mythical creature. It's almost the first time I thought saw it, be, before I saw the title of the name, I almost thought it was kind of like a mermaid type prop because it's got those slightly webbed fingers and the claws. Obviously, it doesn't have a tail, but it's got that kind of mermaidy look, you know, kind of almost beautiful looking woman, but clearly something a bit creepy about her too. She's got those glazed over white eyes that are staring out. She's got her head tilted downwards, which is a really menacing thing in its own right. The detail on her is great. She's got this kind of off bluish gray skin. But of course, the main thing about Banshee is she raises up into the air 
I don't know exactly how high. I think it's about nine or 10 feet. And then when she reaches her full height, that mouth, which you're not expecting at all, suddenly opens up wide, revealing this huge mouth full of rows of sharp teeth. She leans forward and she spits at you, which is gross, but so cool and quite unexpected. If you weren't expecting that from this prop, if you think, oh, it's just a creepy woman, and then all of a sudden it's mouth splitting open and she's spitting at you, that's, that's a shock to pretty much everyone, right? And then she does this thing of lowering down and she, you think, oh, it's done, it's over. And then she opens her mouth again, leans forward again and spits at you a second time. Such a simple thing, but so effective. And I absolutely love it. I love this prop. I could talk about it forever. I think it would go really well in almost anybody's haunt, really. You could make her be whatever you wanted her to be. But yeah, she's not quite made the number one spot. <laughs> In at number two is a prop from last year that I was super impressed by. I think for a while it was my favourite of their props. And that is the Grim Death Giant Reaper. This thing for me is just unadulterated Halloween. This is what I love about Halloween. It's physically large, which is so cool. It's a reaper, love a reaper. And the movement is just enough to make this thing insanely creepy. Not only is it massive, but it's got this creepy skeletal face mold. It's not a skull or a traditional reaper in that sense that it is a skeleton. It's still got flesh on those bones and it's really creepy, rotted away flesh. The eyes have gone. The mouth is revealing these sharp teeth that really do look terrifying. And it's just, just stood still. This reaper is Really quite a terrifying prop to behold. But then it does that classic Reaper thing of pointing its way out. My friend Scared Dad said it'd be great in a haunt because it could point out where the bathrooms are. I agree with that statement. But I love that very simple arm movement, just pointing as if it's like, are you pointing to my fate, to my future, to where to go next? What exactly are you pointing at? But then just to spice it up one more level, he leans forward, and once again, his mouth opens and he spits out at you. Now, I'm not sure if it's actual spitting water like with Banshee or if it's just a blast of air, but either way, it's intense and insane. And I think that really, truly would be terrifying to almost anything. Imagine being a kid, seeing that on your street, this huge 12-foot reaper with an enormous side and the face just looking terrifying and it leaning down to look at you and spit in your face. Tell me that wouldn't be the most terrifying thing you've ever seen. <laughs> but there can be only one number one. And for me, there is one prop above all the others that has completely blown my mind. And that is Frankenstein's experiment. Now I'm a sucker for Frankenstein. I love Frankenstein. There's nothing that I don't love about the story of Frankenstein, the monster, everything about it. It just ticks all the Halloween boxes for me. And if someone's gonna do a good Frankenstein, you know it's gonna be Distortions Unlimited and they do not disappoint. We've got this creepy, quite sad, rather solemn looking creature that is strapped to a board. He's got chains hanging from his wrists. His eyes are sunken and sad. The skin tone is pretty much correct for what how Mary Shelley described it. This kind of off yellowish green, almost gray. The detail on the face sculpt, the detail on the body is insane. The clothing is on point. It is really, really good. He's got those massive clomping boots that you want to see. He hasn't got the bolts in the neck, but that's because he's taken more from the story of Frankenstein's monster and less from the classic Universal movie. He's got wispy sort of long dark hair, but of course it's not just about the prop itself, it's about the action of the prop. And he's there, lay on this board, there's lights, there's buzzers, there's dials going off, and then he starts thrashing forward and as he thrashes his arms raise forward towards you he's kind of reaching out for you trying to escape the only downside I said was that maybe the face looked a little bit too solemn and sad and maybe it should have looked a little bit more angry as he's trying to escape this board but you know what that's such a minor detail for having such an epic looking prop 
I love as well, bit like the Banshee, he sort of looks like he's about to finish and he's sort of stopped. And then he does one final lunge forward, which really would surprise and shock a lot of people, I think. I love that. Such a simple thing, but so well executed. And I would, I think if a few thousand pounds fell into my lap, that would definitely be being shipped to the UK, without a doubt. <laughs> Anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed my top 10 today. There are so many distortions props that I could have included in that. There are so many ones that I love. And in honesty, there's very little distortions do that I don't like. These are just the ones, like I said, that if I had the money, I would slowly work my way through buying each one after the other. But I don't have the cash, so it's not gonna happen anytime soon, sadly. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching today and I will see you in the next one. Keep it spooky, bye.